All right, let's consider a, a, a little a problem. Um, and it's actually related to the crystal structures we've been, we've been uh, discussing. And so consider we have a, a room. All right, that's the room. Maybe that's the room you're in. It's uh, <laughs> another one of my great uh, sketches. But uh, there's a there's a mystery room. And, and uh, let's consider that um, we're going to fill that room now with, uh, with balls. Uh, perhaps we're going to fill it with um, we'll fill it with uh, watermelons. Actually, yeah, and that's fun. Watermelons are fun. So uh, we're going to fill it with watermelons, and I don't think I can draw a watermelon. So I'll just say that that's the, the watermelon. And <clears throat> what I'm what I'm wondering is if you filled the watermelons and you treated the watermelons as as perfect little spheres, you know how and you filled up the room like this, how much empty space would there be between the watermelons once you'd filled the entire room? What do you think? And I, I, I ask students this um, when, when I cover this topic. And most, so as I know from experience, most people, and you could think of a number in your head now. I mean, that would be best if you, if you could. I mean, what's your number? Is it is it 50% is it of the room is is still unfilled, not occupied by the volume of watermelons. Uh, most, uh, I mean, maybe it is. Is it less? Is it more? How much empty space is there? I find that a lot of times people come up with uh, an intuitive guess that's around 20%. I think maybe 80% of the room is, is filled, filled volume with watermelons is around 80%. Okay, leaving maybe 20% unfilled. That is, if you, you know, you had a box that was one liter, you filled it with, or one unit of volume, you filled it with watermelons. You could then pour 20% um, of that that uh, volume in with with water to fill in between the watermelons. Um, and then that's so that's the first little question to consider. And hopefully you've engaged in that and really considered it truthfully. And uh, then what if I took that same room now, but I filled it with grains of sand, okay? Tiny little grains of sand, right? And you filled the room with, with the little grains of sand. You pile them up. You get this little pile of sand, and you continue to pile it up. And so you fill the entire room. Now how much empty space is there in that scenario? And I mean, if you already know the result, you um, and this is uh, just an interesting exercise, perhaps, hopefully. But um, a lot of times, people think that you you may be thinking right now that the the empty space will be less, empty space less than what you thought before, less than twenty percent. Okay. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to consider that. Let's actually work this out. Okay, and what we're really working out here is the the volume packing because we're packing spheres into a into a volume, and it's a it's a fraction, or you could call it a percent, but often we like to represent it as uh, a fraction. So let me just explain why this is a nice way to describe this, and then I'll give you another name that it's commonly known by. So volume tells us it's a three dimensional um, treatment, right? It's it's a it's a cube. We're getting spheres in there. They're three dimensional. They have three three dimensions. So the packing is is you know how much do you fit in there? How much is filled? Uh, whoops, is filled is filled. And fraction tells us it runs from zero to one, right? Now this is as I said, this is more commonly known as the atomic packing factor or the APF it's often called all right so I like to tell you that the different names you will encounter I personally prefer volume packing fraction because I think it's very immediately descriptive but let's work it out let's work out what this volume packing fraction um, would be the volume packing fraction is going to be equal to the volume of the spheres or our watermelons divided by the volume of the the, the room. But of course, we we now have this this approach um, to, to 
dealing with the packing of hard spheres or atoms. They're modeled that way, and that uses this unit cell, where the edge length of the unit cell is A. So we could, we could actually put here in the denominator the volume of the unit cell. Unit cell. <clears throat> so what's the um, volume of the spheres going to be? Well, we have to consider how they're packed. And so let's let's take um, let's take the FCC arrangement that we've already studied and you're familiar with, right? So let's let's take that face-centered cubic face-centered cubic arrangement and uh, use that in our calculation. So if uh, if it's FCC, we know we've got these corners where there's an eighth of an atom. We've got the faces where there's a half. There's eight corners and there's six faces. So we have four um, we have four spheres, and the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed, where r is the radius of the atom or the sphere. And then the volume of the unit cell is, of course, just a cubed, but, but this is irritating. We've got an r in the, in the numerator and an a in the denominator, so we need to be able to cancel them out. And so we see this face diagonal here, which is, in fact, where the atoms are touching, if they were modeled really as hard spheres. I, I drew them a little smaller. And that tells us, of course, a squared plus a squared equals 4r all squared, which leads to a equals 2 root 2 r. <clears throat> so we can actually substitute that into our denominator. We've got 16 pi r cubed over um, 2 root 2 cubed. So that's going to be 8 times 2 root 2 r cubed. <clears throat> so, whoops, I, I missed a 3 in the denominator there. So we can see at this point, um, in fact, that the radii cancel. And the uh, numbers work out quite nicely here. We've got pi over uh, root 2 times 3, which is 0 0.74, <clears throat> which is independent of radius. So we can actually go back to uh, this question we posed up here and say well, watermelon versus sand doesn't matter because as long as we're modeling them as spheres, their packing is going to be uh, is going to be the same. There'll be the same empty space around them. You intuitively think, well, the smaller things are going to have uh, tighter packing, but you see mathematically it's independent of radius. Radius cancels out, and Something actually interesting that I can tell you about 0 0.74, and we can explore later, is this is actually called um, closest packing. That is, you could devote the rest of your life to packing spheres into a volume. Okay, don't do it, but you could. And you'd never get higher than 0 0.74, as long as the spheres are all the same volume. So that concept there is a little bit difficult to um, understand sometimes, but I think that there's another related concept that you can probably wrap your head around um, more uh, rapidly. And that would be if we move to two dimensions, and then you considered, well, what's a, what's two dimension? Two dimensional, it's a plane. So we could have the planar packing uh, fraction. Okay, again, it's fractions running from zero to one, but now it's in terms of a plane. And you could position then, you could position circles on a plane. And this, you know, maybe you've, you've done this, or maybe you've actually packed spheres. You know, you're playing with balls as a kid or an adult, or that's fine. And um, <laughs> there you go. You know, you have a or I, I know. Now you're making cookies, okay? You're making cookies. And how do you position the cookies on the cookie sheet if you're getting a little bit tired and you don't want to have to, uh, you don't want to have to put, uh, you know, do a whole nother batch. You just have a little bit more batter. So you want to squeeze some more cookies onto that cookie sheet. Well, what do you do? Instead of the way I, I did on the left, you probably have a sense that you could squeeze a little bit more onto the plate if you staggered the second row like this. So it nestled into the space in the front. So this arrangement here is tighter or closer packed. And in fact, you you can probably in two dimensions reason out that this arrangement here is in two dimensions a close packed arrangement of of circles. 
<clears throat> and we could also finally just move down to one dimension and then we could say, well, we could consider that as well with a line, linear packing fraction. And while a volume packing fraction and fraction and planar packing fraction will never be one, you could never occupy the whole fraction of this area with circles, linear packing fraction, that is the fraction of a line that's occupied by by atoms, could be one. It's the the, the fraction of the length of atoms over the length of the line or the direction that you're considering. As long as they're touching along that direction, it's, in this case here, the linear packing fraction is one. The planar packing fraction is a fraction of the area of the circles over the fraction of the, or over the total area of the plane. <clears throat>